If you're here and you Good want to move forward, come on up. Good afternoon, guys. Thank you so much for joining us at the North Texas chapter of the ISSA Cybersecurity Conference. If you wouldn't mind coming up to the front, there's plenty of <laughs> premium seating here, and it's all free. Come on up. <laughs> If you are staying for the second session of Threat, mo mo Threat Modeling Part 2 in Stride, and it's going to be presented by Brad Andrews. Brad has extensive experience in the technology field, worked in a defense industry, online services, banking, education, the airlines industry, and many other areas as well. He started with software development in his earlier career and switched over to information security over 10 10 years ago, applying his skills to compliance, security, and secure information technology functionality most recently. He works for the National Health Systems and the subsidiary of PDX Incorporated. His main focus is now in compliance and security development concerns. Brad is a lead faculty and area chair of the Information Systems Security at online campus of University of Phoenix. He has over 10 years of teaching experience. He's interested in computer or anything related to computers, but focusing particularly on secure development concerns. Let us welcome Brad, who will cover gaining your stride in threat modeling. Brad. So do we have any new people? Who here was not in the last session? I think we have one. Okay. And that, that's fine. <laughs> so, yeah, we had a little bit of attrition. Yeah, it's a, interesting to get feedback. Well, maybe this should just be one session next time. I don't know. But hopefully. Although we have a little more uh, cozier environments. But the goal here, I mean, I'm going to go over what Stride is. So we're going to talk a little bit about what it is. But I want us to work through what are some of these issues here. So this is designed to be more of a working session than just a me blabbering away. Who am I? I'm going to repeat this quickly, even though most of you have heard it, but just because this is going to go on a recording too, is I've a long time in the tech field, worked a whole bunch of different jobs from defense, online banking, worked at a dot-com before the big dot-com crash. Kind of, well, when I started, I was contracting. Good contracting rate. I knew it was going to crash. I, I looked at it and I go, they don't have any, they don't have a good good sales model. This is the stuff. Anybody remember the, kit, uh, the QCAT? Years ago in the area, they, yeah, it looked like a little cat and it, well, it looked like some other things, but it looked like a little cat and you could go scan your groceries in the uh, cabinet and go to a web page on that. I was one of the things I was working on was converting to the Mac. So I, I got to write some of the code that uh, took the sound recognition software that it ran, which Worked great. I tried to refactor it. If you're if you're most development, if refactoring, I tried to go, let me simplify this. It broke it. I said, oh well, I'm leaving it as is. It was some really tough signal processing C code, and it was like I have no idea. You know, I couldn't I couldn't I, I couldn't simplify it, modularize it, and all that stuff. So I just said, okay, we'll put it back where it was. But it got it was because you could turn your computer on, listen to the Channel 8 News locally, and they play a little blurb in the middle of the thing, and it would go to a web page for that blurb. Pretty cool. I mean, it was pretty cool. We got that work. I got that working on the Mac. You know, I worked there for the, the, part of a, I think it was part of a year. I don't think it lasted that long. I was actually an employee for the last month just because I wouldn't have gotten paid at all. But then the, it, it went under, but oh well. I kind of knew it would ahead of time. It's a fun time. And then the tech field, and I was like, okay, all these jobs that, I, that were available suddenly weren't available. <laughs> I was like, what's going on here? But then uh, after that, I did get some very good job at a well known local airline. I enjoyed my time working there. Got to switch while I was there to information security. Did PCI compliance. How many of you have done PCI compliance? It's fun. I will tell you, I like PCI compliance better than HIPAA compliance, though. It, I mean, in one sense, PCI has nice little check boxes. Are you doing this? Check. Okay, well, we're not. Okay, we need to do that. HIPAA, well, what do you do there? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, like, I have one problem I've been looking for is, okay, I'm working on... Everybody knows you make a big system, you need to make test data that will test that system out, right? If that system processes private information, PHI, private, is it? P, well, PII is private information, personal identifying information. PHI is the stuff HIPAA will nail you with fines now, especially with high tech going through. Um, 
it's like you look at their site, well, well, you could zero out this value. Well, yeah, I could zero it out, but that doesn't give me good data to use in my system where I need a variation of data. So there's like no guidance there. It's, it's like, I mean, I mean, somebody hasn't thought about how do you turn this data so that it's random enough that it's out of, it's no longer PII. I mean, sorry, PHI. Because, you know, I don't want it to connect to a patient, but I want it to be close enough to reality that we can test that our system does what it should, handles things well, et cetera, et cetera. It's more of a challenge there. Uh, PCI, it would seem to be, I don't know that it has direct guidance there, but they have some pretty good guidance on, you know, how, how do you, how do you random, you know, make credit cards random enough? Although an interesting thing, and this kind of relates to what we're doing here, is that if you note with a credit, uh, with a social security number, I guess it was, the big thing is you can only store the last four of an SSN, right? Except up till a few years ago, if you knew where somebody was born, you might be able to kind of fill out their first part of their SSN and, you know, it's like, okay, <laughs> you know, you were born there, so that means it's one, two, three, four, five, so you have six, seven, eight, nine was hidden, but the others you could figure out. So it's like, okay, this may not be as effective as we think it is. And that is one thing to think about and even relates to our topic as well is why you need to do this iteratively is what my, my concern is what are we using today for data that is really sensitive and we're going to look back and go, you idiots, how come you didn't know that was sensitive? How did you store that in plain text? When I went through college, guess what my student ID was? My social security number. Guess what the professor used to use? To, well, at first they used your names and they post your grades and then they said, okay, well, we can't do that. <laughs> Then they used the last four of your SSN and posted your grades, you know, and it's like, it, it's tough. So what are we using today? We're going to go, <laughs> you stupid. Uh, one thing I think of is probably biometrics. The thing is a password. You compromise a password, you can go change a password, right? Can you go change your finger? Maybe not. Okay. Uh, backgrounds there, 20 plus years software development, 10 plus InfoSec, uh, MS and a BS in computer science from the engineering college. Woo -hoo. I mean, I, I had the hardcore stuff. In fact, I changed to computer science. I took my first computer class and switched from aeronautical engineer, astronautical engineering to computer science. That meant that I'd had a five hour theoretical and applied mechanics class that was eight o'clock every morning that he did quizzes in. So you had to actually be there at eight o'clock, which as a student for me was not easy. And uh, as my free elective, some people took gym, took extra, you know, whatever, basket, underwater basket weaving for their free electives. And what did I have? Theoretical and applied mechanics. But I like computers enough. I took my first, I'm surprised I didn't go to computers at first. I had an able ROTC scholarship, so I could have gone to any school I wanted to because they, they, they would have gotten me in. But uh, almost look, you know, well, what ifs, you look at a lot of what ifs. But I, I had a good time. Great school, loved going there. Highly unlikely I'll ever move up back north again, so who knows. <laughs> but um, grew up in Columbus, Ohio, though, so Ohio State Buckeyes, that's the big. Uh, my active certifications, certification, CISSP, CSSLP, CISM. I've passed the test for the CISA and the C-RISC. I've just got to get around to filling out the paperwork. And I have several SAN certs, which I've let expire because they're great to take, but they're expensive to maintain. My work, work for one of the largest providers of pharmacy software and services in the country. As a, technically an information security engineer, my goal is to get officially a title, hopefully with some pay raise, as a security architect for the company. But, you know, that's kind of what I'm doing anyway, because I'm, I'm now integrated into every software development project we have, which for a company that develops software is quite a few. So I need to clone myself next weekend. So if anybody's learned technology on that, please let me know. Um, and I also have my own company doing independent reading research, RBA Communications. That's been around for quite a while, but I'm here with Opinions today are mine and mine alone. Don't necessarily represent the view of my employers or anybody else in the world, but hopefully they're meaningful. This is the second session today that I'm looking at. Um, obviously, we had a little bit of attrition, but hey, cool. Uh, applying Stride to a system. Who here has heard of Stride before this class? And not just the words stride. <laughs> yeah, I went to a shop and they talked about your walk. No. Okay, so actually now it's about a third of you have heard of it. Um, and then it's new to everybody else somewhat. So hopefully we'll get you at least, you should come out of this knowing a little bit about it and how to apply it. Whether you come out of this being the expert ace in it, well, probably not. We're, we don't have quite enough time to do that, but we should, we'll, we'll hit some realistic things. I want to note, 
It is types of exploits, but an exploit is not necessarily going to fall into one category. It might have spoofing elements, it might have uh, information disclosure and elevation of privilege depending on what the parts of it. So don't think, well, it has to fit in one area and that one area at all, and that's all. Well, we're going to fit it wherever, wherever we want to put it. You know, wherever it's relevant, we'll put it under one when we're working through our exercise. We'll pick one, realizing it may go into others, too. Tampering. You wouldn't believe how hard it is to find a, you know, I want like a tamper-proof you know, pill bottle label or something like that. But tampering is basically making a modification illegally. You'll notice a lot of foods packaged that way, right? So that you can't, you know, it has at least something to tell you. Somebody opened this up and spit in it or whatever, you know, I mean, what have you. Now, could they, could they go to Albertsons and take the prepared food and inject it with something? Yeah, probably. And I probably wouldn't notice because a little pin prick on the side probably wouldn't be noticeable. But why would they do that? I don't know. You know, you got you, you to gotta put it a little bit up there. So, that, again, you balance that against why would they do it? And then what are they trying to do? Uh, some of the tampering scares. Every, every grow up at a time when at Halloween you went out and you got, you know, candied apples, you got unwrapped stuff, you know, you, you might get candy corn, a handful of candy corn or something like that. Are you going to take that today? No, no, no. If it's not prepackaged, sealed, you know, ooh, uh, you, somebody gave you an apple, uh, you know, throw that away. And I mean, I understand why. Well, actually, though, having... Letting your little kids go door to door in the neighborhood now today is probably a little more risky in, in even safer neighborhoods than it was in the past because you don't know what's going on. So that's something to be aware of. Big part of tampering is playing with like a check, your account money, you know, trying to take money from your account illegally, try to tamper with that, what have you. That would be a big tampering. Repudiation. You sign something saying, yep, I'll agree to that. And then you back out later. Well, hold on, that's no longer advantage. You know, I'm going to pay you 10 bucks. 10 bucks a widget for all for 100 for 100,000 widgets you go make the widgets you come to me and since then widgets have now dropped in price to be two bucks like, 10 bucks I didn't say I'd give it to you 10 bucks I said I'd give you a buck how do you prove that I'm really I made the commitment I did that's re avoiding you're trying to watch out for repudiation tax uh, or maybe avoiding the consequences of something well you can't pin that on me you know what have you Again, if anybody has questions about these while I'm talking, you say, hey, I you don't quite understand that. I'm not trying to dwell a long time on these, but I want to dwell a little bit. Just raise your hand, let me know. Information disclosure. Again, another one trying to find a picture, but hanging your laundry out to, for everybody to see. Everybody, uh, anybody promote the Sony breach that happened a while back? Apparently some stuff got exposed. I mean, even if, I don't know how all y'all are in global warming stuff, but apparently one big advocate of the... I don't know what it's called these days exactly, but he, one of the actors who's really into global, you know, oh, it's so bad, we've got to do all this, had had like a bunch of plane flights, you know, within a month period, he had like six. Or I, it, was, it was really, it was like, he would have preferred that not to have been exposed. That's what you got to raise. Pardon me? Leonardo was it Leonardo DiCaprio? Yeah. And I mean, my, my purpose in noting this, I, I can't totally avoid a little bit of tiny political commentary that seeks into my thing, especially when we start getting to this stuff. But that's not my point, is if, I, if you think that's the best thing or the worst thing, whatever. But his hypocrisy is what came out, that if he really believed what he said, he would have taken the, you know, coach plane, but not Leonardo DiCaprio. I mean, you know, hey, he's, he's, he's one of the wealthy. Um, a lot of things, too, are like the, the uh, Snowden breach. Does anybody think that the NSA wouldn't have preferred not to have had a lot of that stuff exposed? Now, you might tend to argue that it probably should have been exposed because it was kind of illegal, but it's going to happen anyway. But they'd prefer to have kept it quiet. Now, there are legitimate things. If you, if you worked for KFC and you had their secret spice formula, I don't know, maybe it has been exposed, but not that I've heard of, but you'd prefer not to expose that, right? Or Coke's recipe or Pepsi's recipe. Yeah, it may be a trade secret and there are some protections, but they prefer to keep it private. So that's information disclosure. Common thing we're used to seeing, we were talking about PCI, would be credit card numbers exposure, right? Interesting thing today, though, is a health record is worth more than a credit card record, which I'm still not, I still have not wrapped my head around why is a health record, like, what can I go do with a health record that will make me more money than a credit card? I can understand why credit cards are not as valuable because... Uh, 
I, I, but that, I mean, somebody gets my, they're going to blackmail me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Oh, oh you got my cat. Okay. I, you know, I'm going to give you some cans of food. I mean, you know, I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't have that much money that you're really going to get away with much blackmailing. So I don't know, but may, maybe it is, I, but I do know I've heard enough that on the market, you can sell a medical record for far more than a otherwise. So now avoiding information disclosure, whatever the reason, see, that's one thing we look at the motivation. Why did somebody go after that medical record? But also we can look at um, why would I want to avoid that information disclosure? Well, because HIPAA fines can get really expensive. I didn't put any examples in here, but like if this was on HIPAA, you know, there's some pretty hefty fines that some people have gotten hit with. So you do want to watch that you don't disclose patient information, because if you do, you got to do a whole bunch of stuff. It's just like if, if uh, you know, this, this companies have had a major reach. I, the other day I got an email from Home Depot, I think it was. <laughs> Here's the status of our breach investigation. You know, there's still, I think that, I think this was their second one, if I remember. I, mean, I have a hard time keeping all this straight. There's some I can't talk about because of certain customer relationships, but, but that one is one that we don't, we don't run pharmacy software in uh, Home Depot. But, um, you know, they obviously have long-term implications of exposing, letting somebody in the system and exposing uh, customer data. In fact, a few years ago, I remember my, even my college, and I bet you this is related to SSNs, sent me something and I got a free year of credit monitoring service. Now, did that really help? Because my SSN is still the same. <laughs> it didn't change, so I don't know. One year didn't totally help. Denial of service, preventing expected access. This could be crashing the system. This could be, you know, one DOS method. If your system has an external interface and it, and it locks the account after five password failures, I just go in and hit every account name possible with five password, then guess what? Your help desk is awfully busy. <laughs> you know, most many companies now have a, okay, then after 15 minutes it will <laughs> reset. But, you know, you can, you can cause a denial of service of sorts with that. Now, again, how you do it is trickier and there's distributed denial of service. And I don't know if any of you have been at the local freebie conferences where they have the one guy. There's one guy who's done it two years in a row down, I think it's downtown Dallas, where he goes, see here, I'm setting off these attacks and see it blocks the whole deal. You know, I don't know. I, he may have some really good stuff, but some of it looks like hand waving to me, so I'm not completely, per, completely convinced his solution is as effective as he thinks, but it's a hard problem because the same people who are valid customers can also be hijacked by somebody who's not and, you know, part of their botnet or whatever, and so, you know, you block, you know, Joe from getting into Amazon and now Joe can't buy at Amazon. You know, so that's, that's, that's a tricky thing. I had, I had my own domain because it was on a shared hosting and I got blacklisted. Pro most likely, I assume, because somebody else on that, that shared my IP was spamming. I don't think I was, but they were. So I had to, it took me a while to clear that one up. Any questions on any of those? Stride, that's, that's Stride. Really simple, basically, basically. What I want to do, interactive time, I'll repeat. Be involved if you can. Again, we're small groups, so I guess if you sit there and say nothing, you'll be more obvious, but you want to sit there and say nothing, that's okay. You're not required to. Don't monopolize, though. Some of us are more outgoing than others. Try not to be the only one giving input. Um, and then work together. Let's, let's all try to cooperate and work together. So...